So when it comes to the subject of what music Christians can listen to, I feel like there's two extremes. One side says that we should stay away from all music that's secular or non-religious and will only listen to Christian artists, and the other side thinks, that's just music, and then they'll proceed to listen to whatever they want. I would say my stance lies somewhere in the middle between those two extremes. So if you're a Christian that is wondering what kind of music you ought to listen to, there's three points that you should keep in mind. Point number one, music can lead to sin. Daniel chapter three, verses four to seven. Then a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre in symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. In this passage, King Nebuchadnezzar set up a huge golden image and gave a command that when the music is played, people ought to fall down and worship that image, and whoever doesn't will be burned alive in their furnace. And what I see here is the trigger that music played here for people to sin. I want you to picture what happened. People here were probably minding their own business, but then they heard a pleasant beat and they heard the beautiful symphonies of the harps and the flutes, all played by professional musicians to showcase the glory of the Babylonian Empire. And one by one, hundreds and probably thousands of people bowed their heads to the beat of the drum and ultimately gave their worship that rightly belonged to God to someone else. So I'll say this, music can lead people to sin. It has in the past, and the same is true today. In the same way that we can feel the bee and hum the tune, music can work its way into our heads and get us to do things that are against God's word. We can dwell on lyrics that are sexual. Certain songs can cause us to embrace anger or depression, or we can listen to songs that promote foolish living and can deceive us into thinking that drunkenness is okay or filling our mind with explicit language isn't that bad. All that to say, music is dangerous because songs can be catchy and provocative and they can find a home in our hearts. And like these people in the book of Daniel, we can bow to an idol that started off as a seemingly harmless song. Point number two, music is powerful. Acts chapter 16 verses 22 to 25. Then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. In this passage, Paul just got done healing a demon-possessed girl, and him and his friend Silas were wrongly accused, were beaten, and then thrown into prison as a result. But despite this injustice, Paul and Silas were up late at night and they prayed and they sang to God and the prisoners were listening to them. And if you continue reading the passage, you'd read that there was an earthquake that happened that made all the prison doors swing open. And the keeper of the prison woke up, saw all the open doors, and assumed that all the prisoners escaped. And because he wasn't supposed to be asleep, he thought it would be better if he died by his own hands instead of getting executed by the Roman government. So as he was about to end his own life, Paul yells, hey, don't hurt yourself, we didn't leave. And as the guard came into Paul's jail cell, he was shocked that no prisoners left. And then he fell at their feet and asked them, what do I need to do to be saved? You see, these prayers and songs that were sung by Paul and Silas, they had enough power to convince a jail full of felons that it was more valuable for them to stay in prison than to escape. And can you imagine what went on through the mind of that guard? He probably thought, the doors are open, the prisoners' chains are loosed, I was asleep. These prisoners literally had everything they needed to be free, but they stayed. So I need you to see how big a role music played here. So don't downplay the power that it has. Because in this passage, the songs that were sung led to prisoners coming to the knowledge of God, it led to the salvation of a guard and his family, and they served as strength for Paul and Silas to continue in their hardship. And point number three, music has consequences. Galatians chapter six, verses seven to eight. 
Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. In this passage, Paul tells believers not to be deceived because a man will reap whatever he sows. So if he sows sin, he'll get corruption, and if he sows things of the Spirit, he'll get everlasting life. So to close, I would caution Christians everywhere to be mindful of the fact that whatever we plant in our lives will grow in one way or the other. So the music we listen to will have an effect on us, and that effect will either be good or bad. For me personally, I prefer not to listen to any music with any cursing. And the reason why is because I used to work in construction and everybody at my job cursed quite a bit. And one day I found myself cursing in my mind a lot. And I soon realized just how malleable the mind is. And I've loved tons of songs that had bad words and I soon found that my mind would concentrate on those curse words just because I love the song. All that to say, I'm not gonna tell you which songs or artists you should or shouldn't listen to. And I believe that there's a lot of freedom that Christians can exercise when it comes to their choice of music. But pay close attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 that reads, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. In this passage, it says that Christians have the right to do many things, but just because they have that right, it doesn't exactly mean that it's good for you. So if a song can cause someone to stumble or concentrate on a sin or act as a trigger for sin, then I would say that it would be unwise to continue listening to it, okay? So if you're a Christian and you're wondering what kind of music you should be listening to, I would say that you have the freedom to choose. And I would encourage you to consider these three points. Point number one, music can lead to sin. Point number two, music is powerful. And point number three, music can have consequences. To close, may I remind all of us that music is a blessing and a gift from God. It has the power to soothe our hearts, breathe life into our minds, and refresh our spirits. So my prayer is that our choice of music is something that we all surrender to God. That way, the songs that we listen to don't take away from our relationship with Him. All right? So I hope that you have a wonderful day today. And may you always remember, Jesus loves you.